Thank you, Josh. Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Rootsis, and I'm the president of A. Rootsis Associates. And I'd like to welcome you and personally thank you for participating in today's webinar. Today, we're going to discuss practical scientific molding techniques. Before we get started, I'd like to bring your attention to IDES. When you visit their website, you'll find a lot of free information on plastics materials, mold and part design guides, articles on various industry topics, newsletters, and ongoing uh, informational webinars such as this one. IDS is an incredible resource and I suggest you take the time to review what they have to offer. When you visit my website, you'll find a link for free training on the upper right hand side. This will allow you to sign in for our free focused uh, training modules. Each week we'll email you a free training lesson complete with questions and answers. These modules contain some short examples of just some of the training materials that we've uh, produced. At traininteractive.com, you can also download free reports, payback calculator, take a gap analysis, and you'll find information on upcoming informational webinars like this, as well as instructor-led training and a lot more. On April 1st, we'll review 10 easy ways that you can analyze your plastic parts. The idea is to give you some practical techniques that will tell you something about the plastic part you just molded. You'd be surprised at the type of information that you can ascertain by careful observation and performing a few simple tests. On April 15th, we'll discuss procedures to fine-tune any injection molding process. You'll see how some simple observations and small adjustments will make a big difference in processing consistency. Whenever you optimize an injection molding process, many injection molders stop their efforts after adjusting just a few parameters. We'll discuss some of the more overlooked concepts such as injection profiling and establishing appropriate cushion sizing. On April 29th, we'll review the best injection molding practices. We'll share with you some simple ideas and best molding uh, practices in this discussion. The most successful operations are the ones that don't overlook these small details which make their molds and processes run much more robust. So to begin our discussion today on practical scientific molding techniques, we're going to discuss who is a scientific molder, determining processing parameters, documenting machine outputs, scientific troubleshooting, mold, machine, and process evaluation, scientific molding equipment. At the end, we'll make you a special offer on some of our training programs that can enhance this discussion. And then we'll take some questions and answers that you have sent to us via the uh, chat function on this webinar. Scientific or decoupled molding is one and the same. This term is used because we've established a scientific or justifiable reason for setting up the process. Uh, picture yourself standing in front of a machine and every value is set to zero. When you use scientific or decoupled molding, you're determining and justifying all of the settings using logical, scientific methodology. So when we refer to someone as a scientific molder, this person is not your typical setup or process tech. Scientific molders are not people who believe the parameters of the machine are actual constantly blame the mold, the material, and machine when something goes wrong, or speak in generalities and try to bully their opinion with, without any specific data. So, to reiterate, when a scientific molder determines a processing parameter, they have a reason for choosing a specific parameter. Furthermore, they focus on parameters that are machine independent. A good molder understands that the barrel temperature settings only influence 
the temperature of the melt as the heater bands only provide 10 to 20 percent of the energy needed to melt the polymer. The actual barrel temperature depends on factors such as the calibration of thermocouples, the depth of the thermocouples, the proximity of the thermocouple to the heater band, the temperature controller type. In reality, this measurement is a machine specific measurement and does not transfer from machine to machine. When determining barrel temperature settings, a scientific molder must consider melt temperature measurement taken with a pyrometer. When determining settings for mold filling, you need to focus on the actual fill time. This fill time should be chosen through the careful study of using in-mold rheology. By carefully choosing the appropriate fill time for your application, you'll ensure that you give your process the largest chance for success. We'll discuss these such tests later in this webinar. When determining any pressure measurement, you should always use the pressure applied to the polymer. Although many of the newer molding machines provide the actual plastic pressure, many older molding machines provide the injection, packing, and hold pressures, and they represent those in hydraulic pressures. So in many cases, a scientific molder must convert the hydraulic pressure to actual plastic pressure using a conversion factor known as the amplification ratio. This is the ratio between the surface area of the hydraulic cylinders to the cross-sectional area of the screw. You can calculate this factor if it's not provided on your machine or in the documentation. To determine the time that second stage pack and hold pressure is applied, this should be determined through a gate steel study. We'll discuss such a test again later on in this webinar. As with melt temperature, the mold temperature controller settings don't actually provide the temperature of the mold. Always focus on the cooling being supplied to the mold as well as the coolant returning from the mold. Such measurements will compensate for any inefficiencies in the uh, mold temperature controller. The difference in these two numbers will also help indicate the efficiency of mold cooling. As you can see, the parameters that we've already discussed, the outputs that result from the process are what are most important to the scientific molder. Process inputs are the parameters which can be entered into a process and the outputs are information that can be determined from what is produced. Scientific molders concern themselves with outputs such as temperature, times, plastic pressures, part weights, and any additional data that you're able to ascertain. When documenting the process outputs, document both the melt temperature as well as the coolant temperature. Most injection molders focus on the process inputs such as barrel temperature settings, if a molder documents a process temperature using the barrel temperature settings, they do not actually know the melt temperature of the polymer melt. Every time that that temperature setting is used, the melt temperature is always different. And this is a point we want to emphasize. It will always be different. That's why you need to validate this. Adversely, by documenting the actual melt temperature, a scientific molder can always adjust the machine parameters to exactly meet the desired temperature setting. Scientific molders document the actual times such as fill time, pack time, hold time, gate seal time, cycle time, recovery time. Here are some examples of what a scientific molder would document. 